Welcome to Insight Builder channel. Introducing Pydantic AI, the agentic framework. Part 5. Pydantic agents message history acts as long and short term memory. We are going to introduce memory in this video. So there are a couple of ways you can access the memory of an agent. So there are two methods. All messages and its JSON counterpart, all messages JSON and new messages and its counterpart new messages JSON. All messages will give you all the messages that the agent has been having till the conversation, uh, till that point of the conversation. The new messages will only give that particular runs message. Okay. In order to get this messages, all messages and new messages, you need to have the message history and you need to pass the message history to result.all messages. So this is how you actually enable this. There are many places where you can use the memory. Okay, you can remember the user preference because you are going to have all the messages of what the user had already discussed with you. You can maintain the conversation, you can store the past purchases, you can pull the data from the tools and you can store it in the messages also. You can remember the user schedules if you are creating a scheduling uh, chatbot. You can recall the past tickets or issues if you are using a support agent. You can persist the knowledge across the tasks because an agent can be made to uh, do various tasks and all of the information can be stored easily in the messages part. And then you can track the past commands and code snippets if you are working on the code generation agent. Now take a look at this. Here we are trying to pass the result of a particular agent. Okay, that means you can take the result of different agents and you can pass it into the master agent. So this discussion of how to work with multiple agents will be taken up in the part 6. So stay tuned for that video. I believe that these videos are helpful to you guys. Do leave a comment and subscribe to my channel for further updates. Now we have seen what we can do with the, mem uh, the messages and the memory and we have seen what kind of methods are available. Now let us dive into the demo as usual. Let us uh, dive into the demo, one minute. I am going to execute python memory.py. This particular script and uh, the code for the script will be shared with you guys in the description below. So here what we are going to do is, we are going to send a very simple message. So this is message 1. Right, and the moment I send this is message one, the Python uh, agent replies to me that message one received. Okay, now if I show the memory, so this is a internal command that I have uh, coded. If I submit it, you will see that it is giving me the message details. Right, this is the memory that is stored inside the agent. Okay, and it is showing all the memory. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is message two. Okay, and it is saying message two is acknowledged. Now, if I use the show memory again, and if I submit it, you will see that it has both. It is having message two, and it is having message one. This is message one. You can see that, right? It is having all the past historical messages also. If you only ask for the current memory, you ask for only the current memory, and if I submit it, you will see it is only showing me that this is message two, and this is showing the last run, right? We need to understand one thing. Whenever we are interacting with the identity agent and whenever we are calling the method run underscore sync, that is called as one run, okay? And the current message will give you the detail of that current run, right? So if you go back here, this new message will give you the current runs message details. Okay, and the all messages will give you the, all the messages till now which the agent has seen. So that is the difference. We have seen how this works. The demo we have seen that. Now we will look at the code. So let us go back and uh, let us open the code. The code details will be shared with you guys. So don't worry about that. It's a pretty simple code. If you look at this, you will see that I am having a very very simple Pydantic agent and the difference that comes up is if you go to the actual call, 
you can see the actual call here i have called the message history here message history go to result dot all messages and here i have done some python checks to ensure that i have a result first the result is coming from memory dot agent run dot sync so there should be at least one run of an agent for having this message history or else the message will be empty right if the agent itself has not seen any of the user messages then it is of no use correct so i have created a simple if else clause which checks whether there, there is a result and if there is a result then it will pass that results data into the message history or else it will simply call a uh, agent without any message history or else what will happen is it will actually throw an error so to avoid that i have created this kind of if else clause also in line number 21 to 24 i have created a if else clause if elif clause which uh, helps to show all the memory and it shows the current memory so in case of all the memory you can see that i am using the result again to show all messages dot json and in case of current memory it is showing new messages dot json right and all of these things is possible because i am referring to the result which is already declared there In line number fourteen, I'll declare it as none to begin with, because once it enters into the while loop, that is in line number fifteen, initially it will be none, because initially if you ask for show memory, it will not go in at all, because there is no memory available, right? So it is better that you we have to first of all have some conversation with the agent, and then we can look at the memory and uh, show it to you. So that is how this entire setup has been made. So I had one. Uh, interaction and then I showed the memory, correct? And then I was able to show you this JSON part. When I had the second message, then I was able to show you the all the parts and the current part, right? So I believe that this particular discussion was short, short, and it was very useful because we can do a lot of things once you understand how the memory works. And also, this is one of the important parts for the next part six where we are going to work with multi-agent system. and uh, agent building becomes so easy with python and ai i have been working with varieties of uh, frameworks through ai agent beta and uh, even the swarm that was released by open ai python tech has surpassed all of those uh, agent frameworks and it is super easy to use and super intuitive i believe that this video is helpful to you guys so do do leave a Uh, comment and uh, subscribe to my channel for further updates with that said i would like to leave this video with four words that is practice 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 see you guys have a great time